Now, there is one more term which is slightly different from oxidation state, which is called the oxidation number. Now, what is the oxidation number? It's similar to oxidation state, just that it is the average of all oxidation states for all the atoms of a particular element. So, actually oxidation number, it says that, I mean there can be more than one, uh, there can be the repetition of the same atom in the compound. Like suppose you have an, uh, suppose C2H6 sort of a compound. So, its structure would be something like this. So, here you have, if you want to find the oxidation number of carbon, then you have to find the average of oxidation states of the two carbon atoms. Right. So, here C. C and C, if you break it, they, I mean, no one will get a negative charge, no one will get a positive charge because C and C, you cannot compare the electronegativity. They are, they are same. So, from C, it gets 0. H, if you break, H takes the plus charge, C gets the minus charge. So, again, here, 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 3 minus charge, C gets 3 minus. So, its oxidation state would be minus 3. And similarly, for this C, this will give a 0 uh, charge. The hydrogens will give 3 minus charge. So, that C will also have oxidation state of minus 3. So, the average of minus 3 and minus 3 would be minus 3 again. So, the oxidation number of C would be minus 3. So, sometimes you have the same oxidation states for the both the atoms, but sometimes you do have different oxidation states. So, this oxidation number can sometimes be a fraction. What I mean is that if you have an oxidation state of 4, and in the same compound, you have another atom of the same element with oxidation state of 3. If you take the average of 4 and 3, it comes out to be 5 by 2. No, not 5 by 2. 7 by 2. Which is a fraction. So, although oxidation state cannot be a fraction, oxidation number can be a fraction. Because it is just an average. So, that was the main difference between oxidation state and oxidation number. You, you would generally need to find the oxidation number only because when you take into account the oxidation, uh, I mean the, a single element, you have to take all the atoms of that element into account. So, that is why oxidation number is more important than oxidation state. Although in case of um, just uh, 
if you have just no repetition of that compound, uh, no repetition of that element in the compound, then the oxidation state will automatically be equal to the oxidation number. Because there is nothing to average the two values. There is only one value. Now, in any um, compound, you have certain rules for finding the ON. What are these rules? The first rule is oxidation number of any atom in its elemental state is zero. Like suppose you have sodium in its elemental state, it's just sodium. So its oxidation number would be zero. Even Cl2, both the Cl's oxidation number would be zero. Or anything else, I, uh, hydrogen, fluorine, nitrogen, anything in its elemental state, its oxidation number would be zero. Because since you have only one element, then you can't have an ele more electronegative and a more electropositive element between them. So there is no breaking of bonds or I mean, you don't have to break any bonds and find out how much charge is coming onto that uh, element. So this is always zero. The next rule is that oxidation number of any compound, if you want to find the oxidation number of a compound as a whole, it is equal to the charge on that compound. Like if you have an SO42 minus, the oxidation number of the whole SO42 minus would be equal to minus 2 because the charge on the thing is minus 2 minus. And similarly, if you have anything like um, suppose HCl, the total charge on it is 0, so its oxidation number would be 0. As simple as that. So, that is another rule for finding the oxidation number. The third rule is that oxidation number for metals will always have positive values. Why? Because metals are electropositive, so they would they would never make a Na minus or a K minus ion that that they cannot bear to make. So that is why Na they, it would it would either be in the in its elemental state it would be zero or in Na plus it it would be plus one. Similarly, for calcium, in its elemental state, it would be 0. In its ionic state, it would be plus 2. So, see here also, uh, the same thing, I mean, the oxidation number would be equal to the charge on it. I mean, it can be element also instead of a compound or ion. So, it would be equal to the charge on its ion. So, here it would be plus 1, here it would be plus 2. Then 
I mean, uh, you can just see that the for alkali metals, it would be plus one, and for alkaline earth metals, it would be plus two. Because alkali metals, uh, alkali metals, if you know, they are sodium, potassium, rubidium, cesium, and stuff. And alkaline earth metals, that is, that means just group one elements. And alkaline earth metals are group two elements, which is magnesium, beryllium, calcium, strontium, barium. These metals. So these metals will always have oxidation state either zero. In its elemental state or plus one, and these metals will always have zero or plus two. Then, oxidation number for fluorine. This I have told you earlier also. Will always. B zero or minus one. Either it would be F two in in this case it would be zero, or in any other compound of fluorine it would be minus one. Because it would gen it would always uh, uh, get a negative charge over it since it is the most electronegative element. They always pull the electrons towards it, no matter what the other element is. So this it will always be minus one, or it can be zero. If you want a positive oxidation number for fluorine, then you can't do it with the help of any compound, but you can do it with the help of a battery. The battery it will make. I mean, it will pro. It will have enough potential to make a positive charge. On fluorine, then it it would need to have a very high potential. But certainly, no element or no compound can spontaneously form a compound with uh, fluorine, which will give it a positive oxidation number. Then again, we have oxidation number of oxygen. Will generally be minus two or zero, but it can be plus two in case of this compound OF two. Although this compound is not very stable because it has two very electronegative elements together with each other, so there is a lot of repulsion. But this, when it is formed. fluorine nothing can stop fluorine from having an oxidation number minus 1 so oxygen will have uh, an oxidation number plus 1 okay now these are the rules for finding this oxidation number now let us do few questions on this oxidation number how to find this oxidation number